Welcome to Lesson 1D, Entropy and Isentropic Relationships. In this lesson, we'll review the properties entropy and specific entropy, then we'll look at the two TDS equations and simplify them for an ideal gas. We'll then discuss isentropic relations for an ideal gas and do an example. You should recall from thermodynamics that entropy is a thermodynamic property defined by its change, or differential change actually, in a process. Consider a closed system. We have some heat coming in we'll call delta Q, and inside this system are properties entropy, temperature, pressure, etc. Capital S is the entropy, and delta Q is the amount of heat added to the system, so delta Q is positive as shown. The definition of entropy then is dS equal delta Q over T sub reversible in other words, we're defining this for a reversible process, which, as you recall, means we're neglecting friction and any other irreversibilities. But we are allowing heat to come in or go out. I never could understand entropy. All I know is that it always increases. Actually, Willie, if delta Q is greater than zero, we're adding heat to the system. And you can see from this equation that S goes up. But if we take heat away from the system, Delta Q is less than zero, and entropy actually goes down. See, I told you I don't understand entropy. <laughs> Let's integrate this equation from some state 1 to some other state 2. We get S2 minus S1 equal integral from 1 to 2, delta Q over T reversible. And note that we are allowed to say S2 minus S1 since entropy S is a state property like other state properties, temperature, pressure, density, etc. The dimensions of S are those of energy, from here, divided by temperature, and the units are typically meter squared kilogram per second squared K. We can also define specific entropy, lowercase s, by dividing entropy by mass. Removing mass from these, the dimensions of lowercase s, specific entropy, are energy per temperature per mass, and the units are meters squared per second squared K, which we get by dividing this by kilogram. I note that when people say entropy, they usually mean specific entropy, so keep that in mind. And one other comment, we are usually concerned about changes in entropy, or specific entropy, rather than S itself. You should also recall from your thermo class the two TDS equations. I won't derive them, I'll just write them here. TDS equal DU plus P dV. I'll call this equation one the first TDS equation. The second TDS equation looks similar, but we use H instead of U, and then minus V dP. In other words, we switch these around. We'll call that equation two. Note that these equations are valid for any gas, not just ideal gas. But we're restricting our discussion in this course to ideal gases. From a previous lesson, we know that dH equals Cp dt, du equals Cv dt, and Pv equal Rt is the ideal gas law. So let's apply these to our two TDS equations. Let's take the first TDS equation and divide by T we get ds equals cv dt divided by t, where we've plugged in our expression for du, plus rt over v, dv over t, where we've plugged in our ideal gas law for pressure. The t's cancel, so ds is cv dt over t plus r dv over v. Now let's integrate. Since s is a state variable, the integral is simply S2 minus S1 when we integrate from state 1 to state 2. And these two terms become natural logs when we integrate. Cv is just a constant. We get natural log of T2 over T1 plus R natural log of V2 over V1. I'll call this equation 1i. So this is the first TDS equation with the i indicating an ideal gas. Similarly, the second TDS equation with similar algebra, and this means some algebra, we get S2 minus S1 
equals CP, natural log of T2 over T1, minus R, natural log P2 over P1. And I'll call this equation 2I for ideal gas. These are the two TDS equations that we'll use most often. And you pick the one to use based on convenience, basically, whichever one fits the equations that you're working with and is most helpful. Now let's consider isentropic flow, or a process. In thermal, we often talk about processes, but in this course, we'll be talking about flows. Either way, S2 minus S1 is 0 by the definition of isentropic, and therefore the left-hand side of 1i and 2i go to 0. Equation 1i then becomes 0 equals CV natural log of T2 over T1 plus R natural log of rho 1 over rho 2, where I've used the fact that V2 over V1 is rho 1 over rho 2. In other words, they're inversely related. Now let's manipulate this equation, which just means let's do some algebra on it. We'll divide by R, and we'll put this rho term over on the left-hand side, giving us natural log rho 2 over rho 1, which you may recall is negative natural log of rho 1 over rho 2. And from this term, we have CV over R, natural log T2 over T1. Now take E of both sides of this equation. The left-hand side simply becomes rho 2 over rho 1. And if we write this as natural log of T2 over T1 raised to this coefficient, CV over R, we get T2 over T1 to the exponent CV over R. But recall, for an ideal gas, CV is R over gamma minus 1. So CV over R is 1 over gamma minus 1. Plugging that in here, we get rho 2 over rho 1 equal T2 over T1 to the 1 over gamma minus 1. This is valid for an isentropic change of state, either in a process or in a portion of our flow. This is the equation we'll use in this course for isentropic flow of an ideal gas. Similarly, in terms of pressure, P2 over P1 is T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus 1, which we can write as T2 over T1 to the 1 over gamma minus 1 to the exponent gamma. But this is the same as rho 2 over rho 1. So P2 over P1 is rho 2 over rho 1 to the power gamma, where we get this equation from our second TDS equation for an ideal gas with some similar algebra that I'm not showing here. For air, P2 over P1 is T2 over T1. Gamma is 1.4, so 1.4 divided by 1.4 minus 1, which gives T2 over T1 to the 3.5 exponent. Similarly, rho 2 over rho 1 is T2 over T1 to 2.5 exponent. Although I show these for air, I advise the students to always work in variables and plug in your constants like gamma and temperatures, etc. at the very end of your problem. This is especially helpful when you're working with software like Excel or MATLAB. You should never write out these equations with constants included, but make variables or cells for each of these properties and write out your equations in terms of variables. That will save you lots of time. Now let's do an example. Air is carefully and slowly expanded isentropically from state 1 to state 2. And we measure these properties. In thermodynamics, we would model this as a cylinder piston arrangement in which the piston is slowly moved up, expanding the gas in this system. In a compressible flow problem, this is analogous to flow through an expanding duct. In the piston case, as the piston moves slowly up, the gas expands. In the flow situation, some parcel of fluid there expands to a bigger volume here, where we would typically call this 1 and 2, or state 1 and state 2. Either way, we can calculate P2. I'll usually list assumptions and approximations when we do example problems. The air is an ideal gas, and the process is approximated as isentropic. In other words, we're neglecting friction along these walls, and we're neglecting any irreversible effects in this case. To solve this problem, since the flow is isentropic, we can use the equation we just derived. 
P2 over P1 is T2 over T1 to gamma over gamma minus 1, and solve this for P2, which becomes P1 T2 over T1 to the gamma over gamma minus 1, which is our answer in variables. Again, I remind the students that it's a good idea to do all your work in variables first, and then plug in the numbers. Here, P2 is equal to P1, which was given, and we must convert our temperatures from degrees C to K, T2 and T1. The K's cancel, of course. And for air, gamma is 1.40. And we get P2 is 195.0951 kPa. In this problem, we're good to about four digits. So I'll give my answer as P2 is 195.1 kPa. Notice pressure went down in this isentropic expansion. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.